Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining Mega Asia webinar. I'm Grace from Mega Hong Kong. Today, our topic is BATO, proper testing of DC high speed circuit breakers, DC HSCB. Our presenter for today is Mr. Tinku Halim, who is the BATO product manager from UK. Also with us here are Michael Afghanistan and Paul Nock, who are, who are the application engineers and also the industrial segment uh, industrial segment manager for Asia. They will assist in a QA session. This is a live webinar. During the webinar, if you have any questions, please type into the question panels and we will answer your questions in the QA session. A certificate of this webinar and a recording will be sent to you in two days' time. So, without further delay, let's start now. Thank you for joining us today, Tingu. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is the uh, presentation for the BALTO. Um, so what we'll do is cover a number of uh, items about the BALTO range, and then we'll see what testing capability this product can offer. Okay. So DC high-speed circuit breakers. So these are circuit breakers that you typically find in a lot of areas, but primarily we're looking at DC high-speed circuit breakers in the railway uh, sector. So this is made up of uh, railways, whether they're national or urban, but typically you find DC railway networks in the metro system, so the mass transit systems and the light railways, tramways, and so on. And there's also a lot of application for industrial uh, need for DC high-speed circuit breakers, typically in mills, marine, minor, and we're also seeing a lot of use of DC high-speed circuit breakers in the solar uh, photovoltaic um, market segment. And that's typically 10% of the installed base. So really the, the, the main area for the Balto product range is for the railway network. Okay, so what are the breakdown of the actual rail network? So we have the traction substation. So the traction substation is the the section of the network that provides the power to the actual uh, railway and the rolling stock. And then you also have circuit breakers installed in the actual rolling stock itself. So two main areas within the railway network, substations and the rolling stock. DC high-speed circuit breakers typically have a very long service lifetime, somewhere in the region of 50 plus years. So they, they endure a very long service lifetime. Some of the current manufacturers that we deal with with regards to Balto are some of the big ones, ADB, Secheron, Microelectrica, Hawker Sidley, GB, and, and many others as well. So why do we need to test our DC high-speed circuit breakers? Um, and when do we need to test them? So typically we need to test them for a number of reasons, but really the, the point at which we begin testing is during the commissioning. So when we're actually building a new infrastructure, a new DC network, we need to test to make sure that the protection that we have for that DC network is operating to our expected um, characteristics. And also for any line upgrades, so if there are any railway networks out there that need to upgrade their lines, they will then be installing new protection on those lines and they also need to be tested. And another very important part of, of the uh, testing is the regular maintenance of the assets in the DC network. And primarily this is to avoid any sort of downtime. So we wanna try and avoid the actual service of the railway network uh, going down. We wanna also want to prevent any sort of catastrophic failure. Uh, so the protection that we have in place is critical to prevent any failure of other assets within the DC network. And that is primarily the function of the uh, DC high-speed circuit breaker. And we also wanna keep people safe. So health and safety issues, we need to avoid any sort of health, health and safety issues and keeping workers and the people working on the railway network safe. And during any sort of maintenance, if there's any repair or refurbishment of the DC high-speed circuit breakers before they're put back into service, we need to check to see that they're operating correctly and within specification. So what does a DC high-speed circuit breaker look like? So the picture here shows a typical 
DC high speed circuit breaker. This is one from uh, Sesheron. So it's made up of a frame, and then you have a number of connection points, and then you also have the direct release mechanism. And this is the thing that we're really testing. So this is uh, referred to as a direct setting current IDS. There's also an arc shoot. So when the circuit breaker opens, you'll get an arc across the contact and the shoot then allows you to dispose of any sort of discharge from the uh, contact opening. And then you have a coil to close the breaker. So the trip detect opens the breaker, the coil then enables you to close the breaker to put it back in service again. So that is typically the structure of a DC high-speed circuit breaker. So if I introduce the, uh, the Balto system, so we have two uh, product offerings. The Balto modular is the, the, the main product within the product offering. As you can see there, it's a trolley-based system. It has a number of current generators and also a control unit at the top. So in all, we have 13 models. And the, really, the, the models are all primarily the same. The big difference is the output current. So you can select what output current you need. And that is typically from 4,000 amps up to 40,000 amps. So depending on your application, depending on your needs, you can then select the correct model for your application. And the main purpose of Balta is to determine the trip current. So all uh, DC high-speed circuit breakers have a trip level at which they open. And Balto very easily detects the trip current so you can configure and make sure that your protection is working to your expected specification. We can also measure the circuit breaker opening time so we can see how effectively it actually opens and stops the current from flowing. We can also measure the contact resistance. So this is a micro measurement of the actual contact. So you can see how well that is performing because obviously any excessive resistance in your contact will then generate heat and obviously perform poorly. So you need to make sure that you have a very low contact resistance so that there's no thermal effects and no heat generation, which could, you know, over the course of time, degrade the service and also cause potential failure of your protection. So that's something that Balta also checks. And there's also a shunt mode for uh, checking thermal breakers. So there's an application for checking the trip detect, the thermal trip detect on molded case circuit breakers, which is again another function of the Balta. So that's primary current injection. We're testing the direct uh, release mechanism for a circuit breaker. The second main part of Balta is the secondary current injection. And this is where we're actually testing the protection relay that is in the protection scheme that the DC uh, railway network will have. Okay, and then with all of our Balta modular systems, they are complete systems. So they all come with the standard two meter cable set. And then we also have a number of optional accessories. One of those is an extension, a one meter extension. Uh, so uh, one of the main uh, features of the, uh, the Balto range is its compliance to the IEC standards for traction power and substations and rolling stock. This is critical because this is one of the few products on the market that actually complies with IEC, but also it allows you to detect and configure your trip current more accurately because of the way it controls the current output. Uh, over a, over a, a long period, not, not, not a long period of time, but over a sustained period of time where you can confidently determine your trip current. And then the second product is the Balta Compact. So like the uh, modular, this is a, another part of the product offering. The Compact is a, a smaller unit. Primarily it's based on the components in the modular. So you'll have the same user interface, uh, the same testing capability, but it's limited to 4,000 amps. So again, this is one system fixed at 4,000 amps, but it still performs the uh, determining determination of the trip current, the circuit breaker opening time. It'll also do the low resistance, the micro measurement for your contact resistance, and also the thermal breaker test. But the main limiting factor with the compact is the 4,000 amps. 
And typically you find compact is used in the rolling stock where they have lower current requirements for testing circuit breakers. Again, the compact will perform the secondary current injection for any protection relay tests. And also because it's a complete system, it'll come with the standard two meter cable set and all the same optional accessories as you get with the modular. The key thing here is that the functionality of the compact is 100% identical to the modular. The main thing is that it's limited to 4,000 amps. And again, the same international standards of compliance apply to the compact for both traction power substations and rolling stock. Okay, so what's the principle of operation? So if you look at the diagram in the middle, you can see that the modular is made up of a trolley uh, and also a control unit and also a current generator. So the trolley houses the main power supply. It also houses the ultra caps and the battery. And it's the ultra caps that provide the very fast uh, power that the current generator needs in order to output the high current into your protection scheme. The battery provides the backup to the ultra cap, so this gives you the longevity to output current over a sustained period of time. So the current generator is made up of a number of DC-DC converters, and also there's a, if you can see on the diagram, there's a LEM current sensor. So this provides feedback to the master module, so it's a closed loop. So you're constantly monitoring your output current and adjusting it to get the required output for the application. So that's the principle of operation for the module. And this also applies for the compact, but obviously the trolley is a much more smaller version in the compact. So what are the test and measurement capabilities? As we've mentioned before, it's IEC compliant. Uh, the, the main thing with this is that you can determine the correct IDS. So this is the direct setting trip current. And we do this by um, outputting the current at 200 amps per second. So typically with a DC high speed circuit breaker, you output the current very quickly and then you gradually slow the current down so that you're actually outputting current gradually so that you accurately detect the trip current. If you output the current too quickly and you don't comply with the 200 amps per second, you are more than likely uh, going to go past the actual trip current and detect the wrong value. So this is critical to, to uh, actually determine the correct, accurate trip current for your protection scheme. So we also measure the circuit breaker opening time. So this is the time it takes from the trip current to actually open the breaker and go back down to zero amps. So the Balto also does this. It determines the trip current and also the opening time. Two separate tests, but both critical in terms of determining the characteristics and the operation of your protection scheme. So the voltage drop measurement, as I've mentioned before, this is the micro-ohm measurement. So we're measuring the contact resistance of the circuit breaker to make sure that there are no higher than expected resistance between the contacts to avoid any sort of thermal effects during the operating life of the circuit breaker. And also the DC protection as well. I'll, I'll go a little bit more into the detail of the DC protection in, in the next few slides. And also the const constant current. So we're seeing the, the need for testing multi-case circuit breakers, which also have a trip detector a thermal trip detector. So we need to be able to provide a constant current to be able to trip the thermal detector. We also see applications for calibration of any sort of measurement circuit. Uh, you may find where, for example, meters in a substation that monitor the current, we need to be able to calibrate the measurement of those current monitors. So in addition to the standard products, so the Balto Modular and the Balto Compact, there are optional accessories. The Balto Win is a PC-based software where you can download your results and you can do offline processing of those results for any sort of reporting purposes. So Balto uh, Modular and Compact, they have a comprehensive reporting structure within the actual instrument itself and they generate PDFs. Balto Win, can also uh, use the PDFs, but it can also generate uh, output into an Excel format. So you can then 
do further offline processing of the results. We also provide a calibration tool, which is an optional accessory. This allows users to self-calibrate their belter. So you can connect your belter to the calibration tool, perform the calibration process, and the software on the belter modular and compact automatically adjusts uh, if any adjustment is needed in your calibration. And of course, we have the secondary injection testing. So we don't provide this as standard because not all customers require secondary injection testing, and, but you can uh, purchase this and this is uh, available with a, with a license key to actually activate that functionality on the Balto modular and the compact. Okay, so system features. So if you see the uh, images on your right there, we have a uh, very user-friendly touchscreen display. Uh, we also have easy tuning of the current injection. So the screen to the furthest right shows how you can set your IDS trip current, the IREF, and then you can also set the slope. So this is the 100 amps per second. So you can set it at 97% of your IDS to 103% of your IDS. This is where you're controlling the actual uh, reduced rate of current injection so that you can accurately determine the trip current. And you can see on the screen, it's very easy to set up. You can change the parameters. Currently, the screen shows 97% of trip up to 103% of trip. So you're controlling the slope of, of the uh, reduced rate so that you can actually determine the trip current. So the, uh, the display on, on the actual screen comes in a number of different languages. So it also supports Chinese, English, and a number of other European languages. Uh, the power sources from the batteries and the ultra caps, as I showed in the previous slide, so that is a key feature of this product, the ability to apply high current, but then to maintain it uh, with the uh, controlled slope. Uh, auto calibration with the calibration tool. And the product is 61010 compliant, so it has a safety certification for uh, safety compliance. And as I've mentioned before, extensive reporting uh, with a PDF uh, documentation and also Balta Win uh, provides output into Excel spreadsheet. Communication, so you can connect with either Ethernet and USB. You can download your results uh, to uh, a PC running uh, Balta Win. And we can also provide software updates should there be any. Uh, this can be provided on a USB memory stick. You just plug it into the Balto and then it also starts the software update. And also with the, the modular, uh, the actual controller itself can be used autonomously. So it can be removed from the trolley and it can be used purely as a secondary injection tester. And this is really for testing your protection equipment. Uh, so the secondary injection test uh, can be performed and it has a fixed number of positions with which to actually test your protection scheme. And I'll, I'll go into more detail on that in the next few slides. So this is the secondary injection. So this is indirect release. So if you see the diagram here, you've got direct release. So this is how the circuit breaker uh, trips with the IDS. And then you have your protective relay, which is the indirect release. So the protective relay is looking for a particular fault condition that may exist on the line. So that it then detects the fault condition and then it opens the contacts on the circuit breaker. So Balto, the Balto controller uh, can actually mimic the output of the shunt. So it can mimic a fault condition. And this is represented in a millivolt per second. So say, for example, the protective relay is looking for maybe, I don't know, let's say a thousand amps per second as a, as a fault condition. The output from the Balto controller can output millivolts per second to simulate, to re replicate the output of the, the shunt to simulate a fault condition that the protective relay can then act on. And this is a way of testing the actual protective relay. You can input a number of different waveforms in the Balto uh, controller. So you can model a linear waveform. You can also model an exponential waveform and, and any sort of combination of the two to actually simulate a fault condition 
on the uh, on the actual protective relay. And all of these waveforms that have been created by yourselves on, on the actual Balto can then be saved so that you can, you can then reuse them in the future to rerun the test with that predefined fault condition. And the trip results are the same as, as we would get with any output. We will see the trip current, the trip time, and this will be shown in a graphical representation. So the graph you see here is the actual uh, waveform that you've created to simulate the fault condition. And any sort of uh, trip or the actual current uh, characteristics will be shown in red. So this is just showing you the the actual predefined waveform that has been created to test the protected relay. And any sort of reporting with this is, is identical to the primary injection. You get the PDFs, and then you can also export this to Balto Wind for further processing. So Balto's position in the market, the key advantages, we're the most powerful primary injection test set available on the world market we go up to 40,000 amps, okay? And the other main thing is the compliance to IEC where we can actually inject a current for a sustained period of time using the 200 amps per second slope. We're compliant with the, all the relevant safety standards. So we're 61010 compliant. The uh, graphical user interface and the actual HMI, the human machine interface uh, is provided in a number of languages, English, French, Dutch, German, Spanish, Italian, Czech, and Chinese. The compact is uh, easily transportable. So should you need to actually get to a particular asset to test it, you can use the compact. Both products come with extensive reporting and the ability for auto calibration. And you have primary and secondary injection in one complete system. So you can test your direct release. You can test your DC high-speed circuit breaker and you can also test the protective relay in the DC network. Market presence, so we are the market leader. Um, we have satisfied customers in all the continents around the world. Some of those you can see on your right there, some of the customers that have used Balto and are using Balto and, and are very happy with the product. We have a unique position in China. So China is one of the biggest markets we have for Balto. And we're recommended by the number one DC high-speed circuit breaker manufacturer, Sesheron. We've worked with Sesheron uh, over a number of years to develop the product and, and get it to where it is now. We have a very strong distribution channel and we have a very strong after-sales support. So we provide a lot of support for customers once they acquire the product. We su supply training and we have a lot of knowledge within the company to support any particular application issues you may have regarding uh, DC high-speed circuit breaker testing. So we have data sheets where you can look at all of the specifications for both the Balto modular and the Balto compact. We have white papers that describe a lot of the uh, research work that has been done regarding the uh, protection scheme testing. We have conference papers and we also have the uh, video. So we have videos on YouTube at the moment. These are still uh, available under uh, the uh, Balto range. So you can look to see how the unit performs, the different types of tests it performs. And we also have a demonstration software. So it's not always that easy to get a demonstration actual face-to-face -face in, 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 in the times with COVID. So we've actually developed a software that can run on your PC and it, it can simulate all of the tests that the Balto performs. You can actually perform a test. You can configure your uh, virtual uh, circuit breaker. You can then perform all the tests and see how the unit actually performs and the result that it provides. So you can get a good understanding for what Balto actually provides. We can also do live demos on site uh, if, if that is possible. And we can also do live demos virtual as well. So uh, the Stevo Electric uh, site in Belgium can actually do a live demo. We can organize that. So you can see the actual unit operating with an actual person controlling it. You can communicate and discuss and, and find out more about the product with these live virtual demos. 
And that's pretty much it. That's the Balto range in a nutshell. It, it, it's a, a very comprehensive, very strong product in the marketplace and provides a lot of advantages for people that need to test their DC high-speed circuit breakers in their DC networks. If there are any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Okay, so that's the end of our presentation. Thank you so much, Tinku, for that presentation. So guys, if you have any questions, please write it now in the chat box and we will try it to answer for you. And for those who are leaving, please don't forget to fill up the survey form and that survey form will pop up when you close the webinar box. Uh, that will really help us a lot in improving our webinars. Uh, Tinku, uh, I have actually a personal question here. So okay. just for, for the sake of the attendees. So what is the difference of testing the AC circuit breaker and the DC circuit breaker? What, what is the difference? Yes, I mean, with regards to the timing testing, for example. Um, I'm, I'm not really that familiar with AC circuit breaker testing. That That's a, a new application we're looking at. Uh, within mega itself but certainly with dc um, circuit breaker testing it's the trip current that is the critical part of the testing and obviously the opening time and the contact resistance these are all, all primary functions of any any circuit breaker whether it's dc or ac you need to make sure that you're actually shutting the fault current down as quickly as possible you're actually detecting the fault current that you're uh, protection scheme is configured for so this is critical and also for the operating of the the normal operating uh, time for the dc high-speed circuit break you need to make sure that there are no thermal effects that are created through uh, poor contact resistance so I, that, that would apply to both ac and dc but yeah and, and normally for the ac high voltage circuit breaker uh, we need some uh, connection to the uh, tripping coil and closing coil, and that is driven by uh, DC voltage. And I think the difference okay. here is that uh, it's in doing the DC testing of, uh, I mean, for the DC circuit breaker, we are injecting actually a high current to the contact, and then uh, the, the DC circuit breaker will, uh, will do the assessment of that current if it is a fault type or uh, it's, it's just a normal load. And then yeah. it will trip and decide on its own. While on the AC circuit breaker, it has normally a relay, especially when we are talking of the of the high voltage circuit breaker. It is driven, or the tripping is being, you know, driven by the by the relay, and the signal is coming from the relay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Michael, yeah. can can I just ask a quick question to Tinku, please? Yes, sir. Sure. Sure, go ahead, Paul. Uh, Tinko, I, I, I've been led to believe that a lot of um, customers at the moment uh, don't actually do any testing on their DC breakers on their on their rail plant. Is that true? And if so, um, do, do you see this as an open market for us with this product? As mean as we are uh, have very few competitors and and the market leader. I think so. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. To, to confirm, yeah, a lot of a lot of customers don't test their DC high-speed circuit breakers. It's often the case that it's one of those things that isn't tested because if it if it's working and if they don't see any issues with the operation of the network, then it, it, it's often in the back of their minds. But where you see a network go down because of the poor operation of the protection scheme, that then you know rings in their minds that you know we 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 must make sure that we have a good protection scheme in place for our networks uh, and in, in terms of the market absolutely it, it the actual take up of of uh, the Valto range globally is is very small compared to the actual size of the market so the potential is huge and it, it's really a case of of you know with a lot of products that we have in mega they're, they're aimed at uh, preventative predictive maintenance and it, it's a case of the telling the customer what could go wrong if they don't have the protection in place. And you know, downtime of any service is, is very expensive for any sort of uh, uh, railway operator. So it, it, it's important that, that they have the confidence that 
in the event of a fault condition that the protection scheme will shut that down so they can then remedy the fault rather than the fault condition perpetuating and then destroying other parts of the network that would otherwise have been protected yeah thank you thanks for that um yeah i couldn't agree more I, in today's world reliability is is very important and and liability as well right um you know particularly with trains they, they don't want their customers to uh let their customers down because it's always high profile um so yeah i can imagine it being very important and becoming more and more prevalent in the industry to to have more condition monitoring checks done um and this is just one of those uh one of those things that makes perfect sense um Absolutely. So, yeah thanks, uh, and, thanks and, there's there's more demand on all of the networks throughout the world you know the the more demand the more um you know if, if something goes wrong then it's more catastrophic because it, it it's downtime and when you when you have a high demand on a service and that service goes down it then causes a lot more issues yeah yeah um i don't see any more questions michael is is there any more questions Yes, sir. I don't see also any questions. Um, I, if, I if, there, like if there are no questions now, we can we can obviously, uh, if if anybody in the audience thinks of anything else afterwards, we we have the the support and the network within Mega to to be able to come back to you and help you with anything you think of in the future. Yes, sir. They can also send us an email. Yeah. Fantastic. I I just like to remind everybody that we have um, some handouts uh, in in the handout file. Uh, for this webinar, it's the it, it's the industrial catalogue, and the Balto products are in that catalogue. Please feel free to download it and to refer to the products. And if you need any more information, there's also contact information there as well. So um, yeah, please uh, please take that time to to download that uh, to give you access. But um, from me, uh, I'll, I'll step out now. And uh, but thank you, thank you, and um, uh, for, for for your time today. Okay, no problem. Always a pleasure to uh, to help out. Yep. So I guess at this point in time we can conclude this webinar, and I would like to say, or we would like to say, thank you for everybody who attended this webinar, and we hope to see you again next time. Please have a good day and stay safe, everyone. Again, thank you okay. so much, thank you, Paul, and no. Grace. Thank you. Absolutely, it was a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.